glad to be here to do this video with my daughter. We decided to do this video because we know a lot of girls in the world are struggling with a lot of stuff. Girls struggle with a lot of stuff. I mean, boys struggle with stuff too, but I'm just naming stuff that girls struggle with because mm -hmm. I'm not a boy. We're just addressing girls. Girls struggle with not feeling loved, not feeling beautiful, and not feeling, feeling that God doesn't love them. And feeling like they need a boyfriend because every girl in their class has one. Guys, I don't have a girlfriend, boyfriend, and I don't have a class either. These are girls' school. Class. I know my daughter has been talking to me about different things, and when she does, I'm just like, oh boy, you know, they. I'm thinking of verses or something that would go with that, or I'm thinking of things, you know. Oh man, girls need to really have their focus on God, not these things of the world, and following after them the world standards of how to dress and look. So that's, you know, so I was like, yeah, we should do a video. And I'm really encouraged her to do it. So it wasn't so much her idea or kind of talked to her. I was like, yeah, let's do this. So here we are. And I think to get started, we also thought that she could kind of introduce herself a bit more about how old she is and stuff so you can kind of know where she's at, what age she's at, and then, you know, you might be around the same age and how you can relate uh, to what, yeah, to these issues. video to kind of address issues that the girls are, are facing. I think for the age range of about 11 or 12 up to two of the teens, I think they would probably really struggle with it. So that's kind of for, for that age range. Uh, and it's not that we have all the answers, we have it all together, we have it figured out and just, you know, but we we just have a heart, I guess, because we care, you know, like I said, I was, when she would tell me things, I'm like, oh boy, that's not nice, you know, and I hear, you know, it's, because we just want to see you walking in who you are in Christ, right? That's what I really want. That's what I want for my daughter. So I have more up and coming daughters and all. We have six boys, four girls. So I've got more coming that's going to be dealing with different issues. And I just, you know, so you know, preparing for them and, and for you that's watching. Um, so we just have a heart yet to give encouragement in this area and to help girls and young women see their worth and who they are in Jesus and who Jesus sees them. And so that you can truly feel good about yourself the way you are made, God created you, and and see yourself the way God sees you. So that's that's kind of what um, we're about. We have a variety of verses we want to share that's on that. Some really good verses um, that will just help to kind of point you to how God sees us and how He feels about these issues and what the Bible says on on the issues for for girls and women and uh, for adorning and. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Psalms 139.14, that's King James Version. So yeah, that verse is just really good at helping us to know um, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We, so we don't know how to describe the word fearfully, but we obviously know that saying it's, it's a good thing that we are beautifully and wonderfully made and that we can feel good about that, that God did not make mistakes when he made our body. Um, and we were made perfect for what he, our body is completely perfect for what he has for us and what the way he created us and we can feel good about that. Um, if you're always, if you're asking this question, why is that body better than mine? Well, of course it's, it's not. I'm just going to say it's not better than yours. Um, there's nothing wrong with your body nothing wrong with the way you look. Your body is unique and special. So, John 
don't feel bad that someone has a talent you don't have because everyone has their own unique gift. Yeah, that's, so that comes from when you're, if you're comparing yourself with someone else. And that's the yes. thanks to social media. So I've heard social media is a really kind of a damaging bad thing because then we're always comparing to someone else that someone else is uh, great what they say filtered shots you know pictures that they put on to make themselves look kind of different than they actually are and so then you're trying to compare yourself and live up to that and you and um, it's going to be impossible to do uh, back in my area I guess my age I, that's less that I had to put up with <laughs> didn't have the social media of course even if it was there at the time my mom wasn't allowed it we wouldn't have been allowed anyway so and she's really not either okay so we said she's not on social media so Oh, but you're talking more about the girls that are, and the ones that, there is a lot of girls well, on that she knows about it on the version of Bible, how girls are saying things about it. As social oh, YouTube. YouTube is social media? Yeah, because oh, okay. I get emails under social. So if I was on Instagram, I'd be so, but I don't really have Um, It would be under mm -hmm. social. Okay. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Proverbs 10. Verse 8, don't let people make fun of you because you don't look the way they look. You are not supposed to. God made you special. Don't let people make fun of you because you have trouble learning. Everyone is different. Don't let people make fun of you because you are not developing as early as others. Everyone grows differently at different times. Don't let people make fun of you because you don't have a boyfriend. Because you want a guy who loves you for who you are and not for what you look like. You only want one you are going to get married to and stick with you for the rest of your life. Sure. So can I have something to say on that? Because, yeah, I guess you know, girls, they, since that is the normal, it's considered normal to have a boyfriend or something at a very young age, then when they don't, if they don't have one, like at her age, she can feel that, like, oh, I don't have something's wrong with me. You know, she's too young to be having a boyfriend. Like, that's not, you have friends, but it shouldn't be focusing on that. That's awful. But in the, in our society, the shows in the movies and on the social media and all that uh, TV and all that stuff, that they, in schools, I guess they do have girls who are in boyfriends at a very young age. And so then, then they think that something is wrong if they don't have one. But that is really sad. That's not. I don't no, have a that's boyfriend. Not, and I'm probably no. not going to have one until age 18. Yeah, for sure. I'm not allowed one, so it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. For sure. Okay, I'm going to share some scripture now. And I was just going to say, at this point, we're kind of just all over the place with this, I think. Here, there, and yeah, all over. So, but hopefully um, you get it all. And where I want to go right now is in 1 Samuel 16, 7, about how God sees us. So I'll read that, discuss that, and then I'm going to read Proverbs 31, 32, that you can just really see... It's talking about a virtuous woman, and you can really see it wasn't about uh, beauty. In fact, it, it hits on that, too. So in 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says that um, he, was, he was going to anoint, um, Samuel was going to anoint a new uh, king. Okay, so, um, and God was going to let him know who it was going to be. So in uh, 16, 7, it says, uh, Oh, I'll start in verse 6. And he, he, it came to pass when they were Cam, and he looked on Il, Elab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto him, Samuel, look not on his countenance, nor on his height or his statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. So that you can really tell that God is, God sees the heart. People see the outward, but that's not how we're being judged, and that's how we need to be able to see ourselves, our, our, the character in the heart, the way God judges and sees us. And then Proverbs 31, I have a few verses. Proverbs 31, 10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? That's not talking about beauty. And in fact, over here it says, and verse 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. And another version says that uh, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. And verse 26, it's not describing her again. I would recommend you reading the very good verses of a good godly woman. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is a law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eats not the bread of idleness. So this is describing her as being, you know, productive, virtuous, seeing about her family with care and love, 
and not that beauty, outward beauty. And the whole, the whole chapter of Proverbs 31, I've heard it's a really good chapter. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 5. Uh, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed in humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So it's talking about us being humble that we'd be clothed with humility. So this is this, this is a, a good thing. Clothed with humility, not just about our, our, our outward. So first Peter. First Peter three three. Who's adorning? Let it not be that of the outward adorning of plaiting the hair and wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. Well, let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy woman also who trust in God adorn themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. So in verse 4, it says, let it, not be, let it be the hidden man of the heart that then here, the which is not credible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. So that is what we want to shoot after. That is, should be what our, what our goal is. And that's what true beauty is. I'm going to read now a little piece that I've written before, it's in the book of mine, um, about true beauty. Not all of it applies just right here, so I'll just read this this piece, but it really talks about what I was saying, reading that scripture about what true beauty really is and what we should be shooting for. True beauty comes from the inside out. It comes from knowing, loving, and obeying God. It comes from a life completely consumed with God and from a changed life in Christ. A life filled with joy, peace, happiness, contentment, and fulfillment that only comes from serving and walking with God. True beauty comes from humbleness, modesty, lightness, kindness, patience, godliness, honesty, being sincere, having a great attitude, being helpful, being considerate of others, and caring and sharing. I just want to pause here. It, when I, I was reading that list, I, modesty is one of them, and modesty to me is really true beauty. I mean, you see someone that's dressed modestly, to me, it's so much more beauty than, than the world that wants to portray less is, you know, prettier or something. I think less clothing, the better or something. No, that's not. That's not. Okay. <laughs> so, modesty and all plainness and all these other things I mentioned is part of our true beauty. True and lasting beauty comes only from God and living a li Christ-like life. And this is what I want for my girls. I want them to know they do not need the latest fashions or to dress skimpy to be beautiful. And they certainly do not need to catch all the guys' attention. Only one good Christian guy that will fall head over heels in love with them and be their loving, godly husband till death do they part is all that they need. I hope you will fill your life to the brim with God's true beauty. I just have to add something to that because when I said they just need to catch the attention of one guy, and I mean a, a true, good, godly guy is going to be going after the virtues and the godly character that I just described. I mean, if he is good, godly, worth, you know, in you, your time, in the one that God intended for you, he's going to be looking at the inward too. You know, he's not going to be looking at the at this outward, so don't think you have to do all this outward stuff to try to catch his attention. If he loves the God and he's going to be looking for someone that has these characters, that is that knows God, that has a relationship with God, that is going to be a good mother, that's going to be a good, you know, housekeeper, that all of these things are, are would be what he's looking at and not not this this outward appearance so don't get stressed and worried over that if, um, that it's not going to catch you a good guy just by trying to have all your outward appearance just right the way the world says so i guess this is the end of the video we might do a part two if we feel like we've left some stuff out so thanks for watching this video like subscribe and share like subscribe to both of our channels bye good idea <laughs> yes. And um. What else am I supposed to say? <laughs> your your two channels.